Thank you for joining us. I'm Rita Peters, Editorial Director of Biofarm International and Pharmaceutical Technology. Analytical methods are critical to demonstrating the quality of biopharmaceutical products. Therefore, developing and validating analytical methods that meet regulatory expectations is vital. An upcoming PDA workshop of analytical methods development and validation addresses some of these topics. I'm joined by Mike Rooney, Director, Bioanalytical Development at Jazz Pharmaceuticals, to discuss this. Hello, Mike. Would you please provide an overview of method development lifecycle? Describe some current regulatory and technical challenges. Yeah, hi, Rita. Um, I'd be happy to uh, give you my two-minute version of the life cycle, and uh, for those who are listening, they'll have to attend the upcoming development workshop for a more complete description with some case studies. But overall, the method development life cycle, to me, is an evolving and iterative process that really has uh, consists of a series of key steps that I'd break down as follows. The first being to define the method purpose and scope. And I kind of look at this as the who, what, and when of method development. So we're asking the questions, who are we measuring? Are we measuring API? Are we measuring impurities, et cetera? Uh, what attribute are we measuring? So are we trying to measure the purity or the activity potency of the who? And then when are we measuring it? And this is really related to whether or not it will be during process development, characterization, or for commercial release. So I think once we've defined the purpose and scope, then the next step is selection of the method, which following on with the W questions would be, which is the which, which would be which analytical technology or platform is suited for the method purpose. The selection of the method at this point would be routinely based on previous experience with similar methods and or published literature data, but also needs to take into account the final status of the method to ensure the technology chosen is appropriate for the final purpose. The, moving on to the next stage in the life cycle, I define that as the development optimization stage, which this stage is really involves generating experimental data with representative samples to try and define critical method attributes. And these would be things like specificity, range, et cetera. And this would really be the first assessment on the suitability of the method. And ideally, would it be involve a multivariate mode of analysis with design of experiments? So once we've completed the development and optimization, we then move on to the first evaluation phase, which is also known as qualification. And this is when we do uh, an assessment of the method performance to ensure that the method is suitable and reliable for a specific purpose. Now, depending on the final stage of the method, it, the, it may end at qualification or it may move on to validation, and in which case if it moves on to validation, that's really a more formal demonstration of method suitability, which is intended to demonstrate that the method can consistently produce a result meeting predetermined acceptance criteria. Now, once we've completed qualification and or validation, the final stage of the life cycle would be method maintenance, which means different things to different people. But uh, in a nutshell, to me, it entails monitoring of method performance to ensure it is maintained in a qualified and or validated state. The method maintenance may also involve transfer to other laboratories, as well as continuous improvement of the procedure. Now, as for challenges with the method life cycle, the greatest challenge I see is really resistance to change. Because I think from a scientific and logical perspective, it's hard to refute the superiority of a life cycle approach. But there are facets that are different from historical approaches, which require a change in mindset, as well as potential extra resources up front, which can be hard to implement within the industry. What supporting standards or guidances or technical reports are available to support method development programs? Yeah, so this is one I actually was a tricky one for me to, to answer because, it, you know, in contrast to method validation where I think there are a number of guidance documents out there, you know, available from ICH, from competent authorities, from PDA, you know, PDA specifically had a TR number 57, which was recently published on method validations. There really is a lack of guidance documents or standards for specific for method development programs. Um, I mean, there are plenty of, of publications in industry journals, uh, such as pharmaceutical technology, that suggest approaches to method development. However, in a lot of cases, these tend to be either case-specific in terms of the product or process or platform-specific, and, and it makes it difficult to try and apply them more generally across the industry and, and across all circumstances. You know, I think it's probably worth mentioning there are a couple of useful guidance documents on, on methods from the American Society for Testing and Materials. 
Uh, they're also known as ASTM International. And that, they have two guidance stocks in particular that are probably worth mentioning, uh, E1488, which is for statistical procedures uh, in developing and applying test methods. And they also have uh, 1169, which is a standard practice for conducting ruggedness testing. However, I would caution, you know, these are not industry-specific guidance documents, so whereas I think they provide a platform, they, they are a little lacking in the sense they're not industry-specific. So, you know, I think this is probably the best way to answer it is to say that there's, there's not a great amount out there, uh, but stay tuned to this page um, because PDA does recognize the need for a more uniform and practical guidance that's industry-specific on method development, and so... There is currently a PDA task force which is meeting to, to work on a technical report to this end. The, there will be a representative of that task force at the upcoming workshop to talk about more specifics on, the, on what's to be included in that technical report. But in the, in the not too distant future, I would anticipate that PDA will have a set of technical reports which will essentially cover the entire life cycle of analytical methods, including development. That's uh, an interesting development to look forward to. You hear a lot about quality by design. So how can quality by design concepts be applied to analytical method development? You know, I think there will be a lot of discussion about this in the upcoming workshop, and I think there's no question that quality by design concepts are directly applicable to the development of analytical procedures. You know, the previous question, we talked about standards and guidance documents, and unfortunately there aren't those available really for applying QBD to analytical development, but I think the QBD and risk management concepts presented in the ICH guidelines for drug development and manufacturer, which are in Q8 through Q11, are directly applicable to analytical method development. Uh, when applying those principles, I think the first thing one needs to do is to define the analytical target profile, which is really a profile that is used to define the method requirements uh, needed to adequately measure the defined critical quality attributes of the product. So using this approach, each procedure within a test panel would have an, an analytical target profile consisting of predefined method parameters and performance requirements that are related to both the analyte and the attribute being measured. If I could put it another way, the analytical target profile essentially defines what is required for the method to be suitable for use and encompasses the design of the method to measure a quality attribute, to meet its requirements for its intended use, and to define an operating space under which the methodology meets those first two criteria. A risk-based assessment of the analytical target profile relative to method performance at each stage during method development would really allow one to design better and more robust methods, as well as to understand the strengths, weaknesses, and capabilities of those methodologies. It would also allow one to manage additional life cycle stages in a scientifically sound way that would ensure maximum success and minimize overall resource consumption. So employing a risk-based approach to each stage of the method life cycle would also likely lead to a lower failure and or OOS rate and would allow for more flexible regulatory maintenance. All right, thank you. I'd like to thank Mr. Rooney for providing this brief overview. The 2013 PDA Analytical Methods Development and Validation Workshop is scheduled for October 7 and 8 at the Renaissance Baltimore Harbor Place. You can learn more from www.pda.org. Thank you. Thanks, Rita.